All right, guys, so today uh, we are talking about, anybody know what we're talking about, the topic we talked about two weeks ago? The origin of evil. The origin of evil. You weren't here. Origin of evil, all right? Origin of evil. All right, so anybody know where evil came from? The Garden of Eden. Let's ask, uh, let's God. ask Brawley and... Um, God allowed it to be in the Garden of Eden. Alright. David and Brawley, what do you guys think? Some place. Where did evil come from? Some place, he says. God created it. David says God created it. What do you think, brother? I don't know. No, no. You don't know? No, I'm not. It's, it's God created one. evil. Alright. So that's the question we've been going over. We've been discussing. We've been learning about. So today I just want to, I'm going to do more asking you guys questions and seeing what your response is. And if everybody gets a chance, just glance over at David, make sure he's not on that phone. Because if he is, we're going to have to take it from him. Thank you. Uh, so, um, we're going to go through some questions. So the big question that, yes sir, over there. Uh, why do you say everything was good, but there was evil in the garden of Eden? Uh... It sounded like evil wasn't there when he did. If he said it was all good, then it was evil wasn't there. Or he allowed it to be there. When is the question? After he declared it all good, or during? After he told them not to go to it. Yeah. Right. After. So yeah, it's a good question. It's a good question. Good for good thing to think about. I'll, I'll write that down. Uh, so. The question that we're trying to answer, and that I'm going to ask every one of you today, Steve especially, if God is good, and I'm going to phrase it this way, if God is omni omnibenevolent, means all good, if He's omniscient, all-knowing, all-knowing, yes, and if He's omnipotent, everlasting, uh, all-powerful, all-powerful, all -powerful. how can evil exist? That's the big question that's been going on for hundreds, free will, thousands of years. All right, so we have an apologist in the back. So thank you for coming. Um, so, because so much evil exists in the world, it seems that evil is either more powerful than God, or God does not want to stop it, or maybe He can't. All right, that's what it seems like. Um, and I want to just give you an example of maybe one of the greatest evils of, uh, man, of, of ever uh, is the Holocaust. Anybody know anything about the Holocaust? Yeah, 12 million casualties. All right, 12 million. I read 6 million today, but uh, I'm sure the number is... It might be 12, it might be 11 or 13, actually. All right. The uh, story of, uh, not the story, the reality of the Holocaust. So 12 million... Six million, it's a huge number. How many people are in the United States? I don't know. Um, maybe around that amount. I'm not sure. It was a span between 1933 and 1945. So 12 years of pure murder. 12 years, all right? And this, you know how long ago that was? 1945, how long ago was that? 60, 70, 70 something years. 70-something years ago, it happened. So it wasn't very long ago. That was in some of our grandparents' lifetime. My grandma's 93, I think. So she was alive during that time. My grandpa was in World War II. Yeah, he, was a, he flew airplanes. No, he, he just in, fixed them. He was in the Air Force. Uh, I don't know, yeah, maybe he just fixed them, I don't know. So he was in the war and and I hear about it now. I actually met a survivor. His name was Paul the Jew. That's what my dad would call him, at least. He was a survivor of the Holocaust. And David is actually named after him. So, uh, anybody, can you guys tell me some things you know about the Holocaust? Okay, David said about 12 million people may have died. I, like I said, I read 6 million today, so I'm, I'm sure the numbers are huge. Uh, anybody else? Monica, you know anything about the Holocaust? The, 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 Gas chambers. Okay, so they would use gas chambers to kill them. How so? How? Like some gas. details. Anybody? They put them in a building and then just gas them out. Yep. 
So they would get herds of people, thousands probably, maybe hundreds. Oh, well, there's killing squads. Get them all into a building. Ghettos. <laughs> They would put them all in a building, and they would light the thing and just incinerate them alive. Tell, like, no, it was like, like showers of it. Like yeah, it. no, no, and then they'd burn them, torch the place. They wouldn't do that? No, they had ovens. They had that too, yeah. They just they dead them. people. No, they just put gas in like They cremate them. Stuff. Yeah, they cremate them, but they did have the gas chambers. So they, they'd have the ovens and the gas chambers. The shower rooms that they'll pack everybody in and then they'll right. drop uh, sight and that's yep. yep. So it was crazy. Get out. Yeah. So it was, it was, uh, so what they did is they, they would gather all the Jews, they would gather all people of different uh, nationalities that they didn't like or thought they were inferior, inferior. They would gather homosexuals because they thought they were inferior as well. And they would send them all to concentration camps, and that's where they would force them to work. They would they would do um, um, experiments on them. They would do testings on them, like you know, be cutting them open, checking you know alive, or you know, people who were totally fine, but they would either kill them or put them to sleep and just cut them open and and just do experiments on them. They they would take little kids. And they would kill them, um, you know, they'd cut up their body parts just to experiment. Just, just like rats, you know, or, or like, uh, like animals, they would do that to people. And this went on for 12 years. Millions died. Can you believe that? Oh my gosh. I was looking at videos this morning and I was, ugh, you know, and uh, they, you know, all the people that would get raped and, uh, you know, lots of girls, um, so what they would do is they would bring people on in trains to concentration camps. They would take them all off. They'd strip them all of their clothes, everything. They'd pull out their gold teeth, earrings, everything. So they'd totally bare. Uh, then they'd you know, give them different clothes. And you know, uh, then they'd go to work. They'd go to work or either they would experiment on them. They would just flat out murder them. Um, just wretched, wretched stuff. And people survived this. There's people who have survived. Few. There was one camp had 112,000, and by the time the U.S. and other people came in to rescue, there was only 20,000 left. 21,000. All you know, all that just killed, murdered, died from starvation. So people who go through this think, man, I wonder if people prayed in that time. I was thinking about that this morning. I wonder if people prayed, God, please stop. I wonder. I don't know. It went on for 12 years. Why? You know, why would, why would God allow something so massive to happen? And then you think about small things uh, that I don't know if you guys have been a product of evil to where something bad has happened to you or to your family because lots of people either go through like rape. Girls have gotten raped or molested or little boys you know, have gotten that, and they carry this hurt and this pain. It's like, why would this happen to me? What did I do to deserve this? And, you know, we think, you know, even some people say that they've cried out to God in the midst of some of that, you know, and it still occurs. Um, and, and, and I can see why people would get really mad, really angry, and even confused about God's goodness and His power. So the question we're trying to answer is why. Why does it exist? Why does it happen? And do we have an answer for that? How, what are you going to say to somebody going through something like that? What would you say? And I'm hoping just in this next few minutes that you have some, ki some type of answer. Um, so I just want to show you a short video. All good people are appalled by the sufferings of the innocent. When an innocent person is struck by a painful disease, or tortured, or murdered, we naturally feel sadness and helplessness, and often rage. Many people have claimed that such suffering is a proof that God does not exist. Their argument goes like this. God is all good and all powerful. Such a God would not permit unnecessary suffering. 
yet we constantly observe unjust suffering. Therefore, at least one of the premises about God must be false. Either God is not all good, or he is not all powerful, or he just doesn't exist. What's wrong with this argument? First, let's examine what we mean when we say that God would not permit unjust suffering. There are two categories of suffering. Suffering caused by human beings, which we call moral evils, and suffering caused by nature, for instance, earthquakes or cancer. Free will explains how God could be good and allow moral evil. Because God has given people free will, they are free to behave against God's will. The fact that they do evil does not prove that God is not good. In addition, if there were no God, there would be no absolute standard of good. Every judgment presupposes a standard. And that's true of our moral judgments too. What is our standard for judging evil to be evil? The most we could say about evil, if there were no God, was that we, in our subjective tastes, didn't like it when people did certain things to other people. We wouldn't have a basis for saying an act was bad, only that we didn't like it. So, the problem of human evil exists only if God exists. As for natural suffering, that poses what appears to be a more difficult question. We see an innocent child suffer, say, from an incurable disease. We complain. Understandable. We don't like it. Understandable. We feel it is wrong, unfair, and shouldn't happen. Understandable. But illogical unless you believe in God. For if you do not believe in God, your subjective feelings are the only basis upon which you can object to natural suffering. Okay, you don't like it, but how is your not liking something evidence for God not existing? Think about it. It's just the opposite. Our judgments of good and evil, natural as well as human, presuppose God as the standard. If there's no God, there's neither good nor evil. There's just nature doing what it does. If nature is all there is, there is absolutely no need to explain why one person suffers and another doesn't. Unjust suffering is a problem only because we have a sense of what is just and unjust. But where does this sense come from? Certainly not from nature. There's nothing just about nature. Nature is only about survival. What, in other words, does it mean for suffering to be unnecessary or wrong? How is that determined? Against what standard? Your private standard means nothing. My private standard means nothing. We can talk meaningfully about suffering being unnecessary or wrong only if we have an underlying belief that a standard of right and wrong objectively exists. And if that standard really exists, that means there is a God. Moreover, the believer in God has an incomparably easier time than the atheist psychologically, as well as logically, in dealing with the problem of natural suffering. If you accept that a good God exists, it is possible to also believe that this God somehow sets things right, if not in this world, then in the next. For the atheist, on the other hand, no suffering is ever set right. There is no ultimate justice. The bad win, and the good suffer. Earthquakes and cancers kill. End of story. Literally. If nature is all there is, how can a sensitive person remain sane in a world in which tsunamis wipe out whole towns, evil men torture and murder innocent victims, and disease attacks people indiscriminately? The answer is, it's not possible. Is that how you want to live? I'm Peter Kreeft, professor of philosophy at Boston College for Prager University. Um, I, don't, I just want to ask you guys some questions, okay? So, we had a class last, two weeks ago, we had somebody come in, he's an apologist, and he taught us a few things. So, uh, Raleigh and Dave weren't here, but I'm sure you guys are probably smarter than the rest of us, so you guys will be able to figure it out pretty quick. Uh, I want to ask you guys some questions about this. Um, all right. First one, what is evil? What is it? If you were going to put a definition on it. The space, uh, the space between heaven and earth. All right. Space between heaven. So you're saying that it's a... Uh, Dividing us. It's a... 
But is it tangible? Can you? Is it like a something you can touch? <laughs> is it a thing? Is it? Rally says, "Would you say yes or no?" It's an act. It's an act. Rally, what did you just say? Thing or no thing? I think so it can be a thing. Josh says it can be a thing. An idol. Thing or no thing? All right. Okay. So think about you know the creation of the world. Everything was made through God, by God, through Him. We talked about evil in our last class. Was evil something created also, a thing, or is it something else? What is evil? All right. Evil is. Uh, let me see. I wrote it down here. It's kind of a hard. Where did I put it? Uh, evil is moral, contrary to the will of God, malevolent intent. So contrary to the will of God, to the will of God, all right? Everything against God's will is evil. And God's will is for everything to occur the way he designed it. Good. Evil is contrary to it. All right, it's a moral, moral, uh, what did I write? Moral category. Category, all right? So it can be evil acts, it can be evil things like tsunamis coming and hit, wiping out a town, earthquakes, and then God didn't create the world to be like that. No, no, it wasn't. It was all made... Perfect, good. And we don't really know what that, we know the evil side of it, but what if it was not like that, you know? All right, so what is evil? Um, and so the question is brought up is, is it, is it a thing? All right? And I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. Did God create evil? Alright, Steve? Uh, no. Explain. Uh, because um, an angel fell from heaven and uh, he wanted uh, to be, or have the right authority that God had. Okay. Uh, he allowed it. He allowed it, okay. So, where did evil come from? Came from our own desires. All right. Came from our own desires. Some more answers from last last two weeks ago. The guy came in. He told us some things. Steve was on to it. Said a fallen angel, but he's not. He didn't. Well, it was his own desire as well. Yeah, that's. Did, did God create evil? Steve, you said no. No, okay. Free will. Steve says no. And then why? Why? Because David says free will. Steve said an angel fell. Rally, any thoughts? Pretty much the guy said that the act of the angel, the act of the angel falling or the rebellion of the angel was the origin, the first origin of evil. So what he said, exactly. So it's when, his own desire that kind of When the first moral free being sinned, that was, a, that was when evil, that's when evil begun. But who created it? It's a choice. And God created the choice. He didn't create evil. He created the possibility for it to occur. Why? All right. Why would He create? Why would God create the possibility for evil to occur? Anybody? If there was no option, there wouldn't be free will. That's what I said. Free will. All right. Why is it an option? 
because of free will. All right? So we, we talked about angels last time. Like an angel fell. And when evil began, at least as far as we can tell, as far as theologians at least, people who studied it, as far as I can tell is whenever the first moral free being committed sin, that's when evil started. And we believe that it was Satan, the devil, or maybe it was someone else before him. I don't know. Whenever he sinned, evil started. Boom. And then he passed it on to his angels. They started making the choice. And then Adam and Eve. Alright, and then Monica. I know. Even though she looks innocent, evil. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, I'm not actually, but uh, <laughs> we all are. <laughs> Alright, so because of free will. So that's a big, that's big. You know, we did a lot, we did some debates on where the devil came from and all this stuff. Did God create him and all these things? And But it really comes to evil. Where did it come from? Did God create this? Or do you create the possibility because he wants you and I and angels to have the option to choose him? But at the same time, did he give them the, the desire to that? So that's that's another question that comes up. Did he give them the desire to want to be evil? One of the questions that came across when I did the study is like, if um, if God is all knowing and he knew that eventually. The devil was going to fall. He allowed it. Why did he just not create him? Right. Yep. Anybody? What do you think? Rally? Why would, why would God create the devil, angels, if he knew they were going to fall anyway? Monica? Anybody? Why? And we, you know what? I asked this question... When that one came up, why would he create you if he knew you were going to sin against him? Because I, I think he didn't do it because if, like, any anything that, um, any explosion or anything that had to be created needed a catalyst, and that was the devil. Without the devil, evil would, would be there, but it wouldn't exist. Nobody would know about it. it would, Somebody it had to be. start... The ball rolling, pretty much. Yeah, I don't know. It's always so, going to be there. Well, yes, it's it's not going anywhere, as far as you know, as far as we're around. As long as we're around, um, yeah. So I mean, that's we're getting into area that we we don't really know. We can speculate, but why is evil an option, like you said, so that we have the option to choose good too? We have the option to choose good. And, uh, well, actually, uh, I think I'm phrasing that wrong, so that we can choose love. You have the op Because you have the option to make a choice, you're not a robot. David wasn't born with, with the only option to love God. He actually has an option not to. And he's, all of us have chosen the option not to. And at some point in our life, we made the choice to come back or to choose him. Um, and that's kind of what everybody in the world is dealing with. We all have options. All right? So why is evil an option? Because of free will. Um, and, the same, and that would explain, why, how does that explain Hitler? Why did God not stop him? Well, you can't stop him because he's dead and there's a gap between him. Yeah, why, uh, okay, well, there's a gap. Why does he stop cancer? Or anything else that's happening? He can't, I don't think God can interfere. Like, he can, if we allow but him, it, it's not part of his plan to interfere like that. I'm sure that God tried to stop it in many ways. Like, he tries to stop us from going to parties, somebody walking up, hey, you want to go to the youth center, or do you want to do that? He tries to interfere. But things happen. Yeah, I mean, because I'm sure a lot of people 
a lot of Jews have died, a lot of Jews still living, are very, very right. angry at God for not stopping that. Especially when they're claimed, you know, it's supposed to be his people. You know, and to not to not stop something like that. Why? And I, I you know, that's it's a it's a huge question, but I think what we can get from this is that God gave Hitler that same option, all the people around him to choose. And I'm sure the devil was behind it all. I'm sure he was right, you know, he was in the midst of this causing all this to happen. You know, there was a lot of evil the behind all Hitler this. Had. Yeah, a lot of stuff. So why didn't God stop it? I think maybe for the same reason why David said, why does he not stop cancer? Why does he not stop people from raping other people? It happens daily. Little kids get molested. It's wretched. You know, sick. Because everybody has the option to choose. Because we all have the option to choose, and God's not going to force every person on the planet to make to choose him. So it's uh, he's given you the option. Yes. Just he didn't, wasn't here for the beginning of the yeah, class. Oh. Needs to, needs to a refresher. Oh, uh, we asked everybody in the meeting class to sur mm -hmm. surrender all their electronics devices. Oh. So that we wouldn't be distracted. He's on class. <laughs> 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 Alright, it's over. No, Thank it you. goes up there. Where? Up there. The so, uh, confiscated. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice it's looking phone. Alright, can we resume now? Alright. It's good to have you, by the way. Alright, so that's what we're talking about because I just want you guys to, you're going to get the question. Probably from someone wondering or from someone who's actually been raped. Why the heck would God allow this to happen to me? There is no way I'm believing in a God like that. And what are you going to say? Um, what is he going to do to stop? Yeah, why didn't he stop it? <laughs> Let me ask you another question. Can evil exist without God? What can good exist without God? Can good exist without evil? Can God exist without evil? Do they need each other? Uh, just like the apologetics said, that if you say God can't exist without evil, it's saying that you're putting evil at the same level as God. So that's irrelevant. So God is above that. So yeah, God Yeah, can but exist. God is there before evil was. Right. Good doesn't need evil to exist. But evil needs good the evil to needs good to exist, and it's uh, yeah. I, it may be a little difficult to understand, but the more you just think about it, that's the, con the only really conclusion you come to is that God doesn't need the devil to exist. He doesn't need his opponent because he's all good. He's all powerful. He can exist alone, and he has. The devil, on the other hand, needed God to exist, at least in the world we live in. He needed God because God was. God was first, um, and the devil and evil isn't its own. Evil isn't its own. I was going to say entity, but it's not its own being like God. You know, even evil is just the product of choosing not choosing God or choosing to disobey. So that's kind of what we're what we're dealing with and what we're learning about evil. And can evil exist without God? Uh, and let me phrase it another way. Um, let's look at the world. A lot of people today believe that there's no true evil. Like if you, a lot of, if you ask atheists or people who don't believe in God, they'll say, well, uh, what is evil? What's good? What's right? What's wrong? What's right for you is different for me. I can be, you know, I can be gay. You don't have to be. It's not wrong. Or I can I can go to the club and I can do this and you know maybe you think it's wrong that's fine for you it's whatever you decide is right is right for you um, all right so without God is there really evil all right how would you decide how would you decide what's right what's wrong. Let me ask you this, is, is there anything that you think in all of the world, in all of human history, is there any laws or any 
rules that all, all the um, cultures may have in common with us today. Any, any laws that we have that have been, like you think, through, throughout the entire history of the world? Anything? Commandments. What? What laws do you think? That maybe, I, I don't know if you, know, you guys know history, but murder, what would you think? Stealing, uh, just do maybe from movies you've seen. Go back, way back, even 300 years, I don't know. Um, what are you asking? The, what laws do you think surpass time? They're always there, always going to be don't there. Don't murder, don't steal. And they've always been just there. Said. What do you think? All right, murder. Do you think killing is always wrong, no matter what about a hundred years from now? Do you think it's going to be okay to well, murder each other? Feel like the government. Like what? What is that movie, The Purge or something? Yeah. Like once a year, you get to kill people and it's fine. That's every day. I don't know. Uh, will it ever be right? Of course, in wars. But will it, do you ever think it'll be right? Like in a, our conscience, like yeah, it's no big deal. Know, killing. I think some people have that. All right. I guess the point I'm trying to say is that there's got to be a standard. So this is a ruler. All right. So let's say I asked uh, Browley to measure the top of this stool. Would you say big, small, medium, Large. tiny? What would you say if you're going to measure this? How? Just, just tell me uh, how many inches you think that is. Six and a half. Sure. All right. Anybody else? Fourteen. Fourteen inches. A foot. All right. So, what what standard are we using to measure this? Uh, I'm guessing. Inches. Right. Inches. All right. So that's a standard unit of measurement. All right. Every country, of course, what do they have? They have uh, metric. Metric. Other places, something else possibly, I don't know. All I know is inches. Um, let's say that there was no standard of measurement. That we just, everybody here decided their own thing. Raleigh says, well, I think that's huge. And David <laughs> says, that's small. And Kimberly says, that's perfect. And, you know, Steve says, that's medium. medium. What standard would they be using to measure this if it weren't Inches Sizes. or metric? Sizes. Preference, maybe. Or experience. Uh, experience. Whatever you want. What? Whatever you want to measure. If there was no if there was no standard to measure, you would all be we would all be just measuring it by whatever we want. And the re and the question I guess I'm trying to get to is that is there evil if there is no God? Is there really evil? Because everything really, if there is no God, there is no, there's no ruler. Because if the ruler, if there's no God, the ruler is just whatever, whoever so decides it to be. <coughs> Whoever's in the most there's power. There's no chair, then the ruler can't. So there's no ruler, you can't. Everything. Yeah, if there's no, if there's no standard. How can we how can we measure how can we judge rightly? Everybody's just doing it to where their preference, and that's kind of what it's getting to is that everybody says, uh, you know, let's get rid of these laws, let's get rid of all this because that's not right for us. This is what we want, and, for, and kind of like Hitler. Okay, who's to say Hitler's doing wrong? If there's no real standard. Maybe the United States has its own laws. But in Germany, their laws, it's okay to kill people. It's Jews. Why, why, are we, why should we impose what we think is right on them? And the big thing is, is that it's kind of hard to see, but there's laws, there's, these inner, there's this inner thing going on that's in all human beings. It's like a written code to where we know Killing is wrong. We just know it. As soon as Browley pops out of you know his mom and then you know he came walking around, he was he was he was already an evil little kid. You know he's I'm sure he's you know hitting somebody or 
But the same for me. I was a bad kid, you know, from the start. But the same for me. But somehow I knew what I did wrong. Uh, and, and I don't know, maybe not as a, like a real baby. My brain was still growing. But for all of us and for people throughout the world, we know. We have this inner knowing. So the point is, what if that inner knowing was gone? No God. No standard. What is good? What is good and what is evil? It depends on what everyone decides. It depends on who's the most powerful. It depends. Alright, so... The reason evil even exists is because we have a standard to measure it by, and it's God. Uh, and um, that, that, that argument is one that you know I'm still working on. I got a little bit of it, but you guys are going to be faced with some of that. Evil doesn't even exist. You just Even now, as you talk to people, you'll see it. But uh, the last thing I want to say... Is, where is it? Why doesn't God get rid of evil for good? Why doesn't He just smash it out? All right. If we know, if we know that evil is con anything contrary to the will of God, whether it's a thing or not, I don't think it is. I think it's a choice. It's not a thing, but it can it can manifest in people, and they can you know evil presences. You felt it. People have felt it. That's evil presence. There's an evil per being, the devil. He's like the evil guy. Uh, did God create evil? No, because he cre he created the the choice. Sorry, sound of brain. He created the choice. He created free will. Why is evil an option? Because of free will. Why doesn't he get rid of it altogether? Why doesn't he get rid of evil altogether? If you want evil, if you want Hitler's gone so bad, and you want God to stop all evil, what would he have to do to get rid of it? Steve, any thoughts? If we wanted rape to stop, if we wanted murder to stop, if we wanted oppression to stop, if we wanted uh, thievery to stop, pornography, all these things to stop, what would God have to do? What would you have to do to stop it? Come back. Come back? He'd have to kill everybody. <laughs> Wipe us. He'd have killed me. If he wanted all evil to stop, he'd have to kill you and me and the pastor, everybody. He had to do Hitler's job. And you know, at one time he did. He flooded the whole world. He said, everybody here is evil. I'm going to kill them all. Saved six or eight of them. Now we're all siblings. Eight. eight. Saved eight of them out of everybody. I don't know how many died. Still didn't cure the problem. Mm -hmm. It's still there. But uh, I was going to read this verse, but in Romans 7 it says, Paul was saying, I don't know, what the heck's going on with me? I got evil in me fighting against good. And it's not going anywhere, he says, but thank God for Jesus. Because Jesus paid it. So I think that's the hope we have, and maybe next week we'll talk a little bit about that. But the reason why God doesn't totally get rid of evil now is because of us, because we are evil, because He loves evil people, even though they are evil. But there is a time coming when He will. And what side we're going to be on is going to be the question. So uh, hopefully that helps you answer, because... Well, probably next week I'll just do a slight quiz on you guys and interrogate you as an atheist to see how you respond. So if you have the chance to talk to somebody this week, ask them, hey, uh, why don't you believe in God? And just see what they say. And maybe they say, well, something happened to me and I hate God because of it. You can tell them, well, you know what? I don't think it's God's fault. I, think, I don't think that was God's idea. I don't know. So uh, your phones, you can pick them up as soon as we're done. I'm just going to pray for you guys. We can roll out. Sorry it was a little long today.